Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be going through a collection of various things that ended up going unused or were removed in Super Mario 64. This video is also going to serve as a response video to my Mario 64 iceberg, because this video will give me the chance to make corrections to that video if I bring up something that I also brought up in that one. This video is also most likely going to be split up into its own subsections, which will revolve around the categories that the game has been given on the cutting room floor. So this video is going to be split up into multiple different categories, which includes things like unused objects and models, regional and version differences, unused textures, and general game oddities. Another thing that I feel is important here is that I'm going to skip over the really boring things, like talking about behavioral code for things that are conceptual in the game files. I'm just not going to talk about anything like that because I just don't really find it interesting. Also, there's no way I'm going to cover everything to the fullest. And knowing the monolith that is the Mario 64 community, I'm sure new discoveries will be made well after I upload this video onto YouTube. But regardless, let me stop rambling and let's talk about it. So let's start with unused animations. Mario has a total of 209 animations in the game, which are indexed from 0 to 208, and some of these animations go unused inside of the game. Examples include the animations shown on screen, which range from animations called Hat Weight End all the way to an animation called Jump Back. Some of these are very strange to me, like Ocean Weight 1, 2, and 3, which I talked about in the Iceberg video, but without a doubt here, the funniest ones are the last two, which are You Jumping and Jump Back. The animation on the left is the normal side flip animation which is used, but the one on the right, being animation 73, shows a slightly different animation. Another weird animation here is animation 84, which appears to have been used when landing from a jump to a Koopa shell, but to me it looks like Mario has only one leg. There's also a couple of unused enemy animations, and I'll start it with showing these two unused ones from the bully and Mips, and this also gives me a good excuse to highlight this moment from my iceberg video. Throwing Mips. I honestly doubt this one being true, but in Super Mario 64's development, Mario was originally able to throw Mips. The developers had the intent of letting Mario throw him by the ears. This wasn't ever implemented due to the time constraints and internal conflicts related to animal abuse. With that said, I think that this is just a bullshit creepypasta that somebody made, because why the hell would Nintendo ever do something like that? Well. I was wrong. I- I know, I know. Hold your applause. Just hold on. We're gonna talk about it. It turns out that in an official strategy guide interview, Shigeru Miyamoto revealed that Mario was going to be able to throw Mips at one point in development, and the animation that you're seeing on screen is the animation that still has code for it left over. As for the other animations, this is what the final animation looks like for the sleeping piranha. But the beta version was this animation that has visible teeth when it sleeps, and occasionally bobs its head like it's having some sort of sleep reflex. The monkey, which I didn't know was named Ukiki, has an unused animation of being thrown just like Mips does, but no code related to him being thrown actually exists. Koopa the Quick has two unused animations of him running, and also falling down. There's four unused Bowser animations, with one of them being broken because the developers forgot to remove it from the final version, so its only frame is a frame of him doing this. But the other three do work, and are just different animations of him jumping, falling down, and getting back up. The last animation is what appears to be a Chukya balancing itself, which was meant to be used for when the Chukya was idling, but ended up not being used. There's five unused sounds in the game, which aren't really anything crazy, but the sounds consist of a Mario jump sound, a trap door, a boing sound, and two unused instruments. I'll go ahead and play them all in that order. Yeah. The next two ones are ones that I talked about in the Iceberg video, and the first is an unused blizzard effect, which is just a faster version of the snowfall effect that's already in the game, making it look more like a blizzard. The effect is purely aesthetic and interacts with Mario in the same way as normal snowflakes do, and it's also worth noting that the word blizzard is spelled wrong in the source code, being spelled with an E instead of an A. And now onto my personal favorite unused thing, which is this flower. This isn't actually a singular flower, but rather an event that, when enabled, causes a bunch of small bouncing flowers to spawn around Mario, with their spawn point radius being dependent on his position. 
they attach themselves to a level's solid horizontal surface, and it's another purely aesthetic effect that can be spawned with an OBJ importer. Something weird about the flower though is that it's found in the resources for Lethal Lava Land, which is due to it being grouped with the bubble effects, which happen to include the lava bubbles from Lethal Lava Land. And just in case you were wondering, this is what the source code for it looks like. Some of the text in the game was blanked out of the Japanese version for overseas releases, which included messages about doors being opened, and a 100 star coin for whatever stage it's for. And there's also this, which is found between the lines of the Secret Aquarium and Castle Secret Stars. Delicious Cake was also an entry on the Iceberg video, and I had no idea what it even meant at the time, but obviously I know what it means now. This dialogue for Big Boo's Haunt ended up going unused, with the messages being intended to show up after the greeting that appears when Mario enters the stage for the first time, with a short Boo laugh playing as the text box appears. All of the dialogue for this was translated in the English, French, and even the Chinese version for the IQ console, but it was never translated for the German release of the game until the DS version came out. The text that's been on screen is from a leftover file in the source code that contained older code used for the Boo's. The Shoshinkai 1995 version of the game originally had a stage select that looked like this, with the only levels that you could visit being Womp's Fortress, Lethal Lava Land, Coco Mountain, Dire Dire Docks, and Bowser in the Dark World. It also had a pause menu that was this. This next one is pretty interesting. So I talked about this one in the Iceberg video too, but it turns out that the Pyramid in Shifting Sandland was originally going to have its own cutscene when the top came off, and it's pretty dramatic compared to what actually happens in the game. Camera shake data exists for this cutscene, and additional data was found commented out in the Pyramid Actor, meaning that this was intentionally removed from the game. I'll only touch on this one briefly because everybody knows about Luigi already, but after decompiling the IQ version's source code, it appears that there's some leftover files from when Luigi was intended to be in the game. Alright, on to the debug content. The first and most obvious thing is that Super Mario 64 has a debug menu with older versions of it going unused in the game. One of the first menus that were found displays Mario's angle, speed, action, as well as the memory info being labeled as debug message in the source code. This menu is referred to as the classic debug display. Along with the classic display, there also exists a much more complicated one being called the complex debug display, which displays everything from map information to the current number of loaded objects. Both of the debug menus can be loaded by using game shark codes, with the top one being the code for the simple menu, and the larger ones being the codes for the complex one. I can't believe I'm still learning new things about this game, but along with the aforementioned menus, there's also one called the debug resource meter, with each color being a reference, with every mark being a 60th of a second. Red is the time of the audio thread, yellow is the game logic thread, orange is the video thread, and I have no idea what the hell the blue one is. But when the top bars reach the orange reference bar, then that means that processing a frame took longer than a 30th of a second, and so a lag frame is introduced, with a small red bar appearing in the middle whenever it happens. It's labeled as a process meter in the source code, and I couldn't find a video of this in action, so I don't really fully understand its functionality, but it's there. There's two other functions called debug spawn and free movement mode, with the first one causing various objects to spawn that alter Mario's movement, and by pressing the D-pad buttons it will spawn either nothing, a Koopa Shell, a Water Koopa Shell, or a Crazy Box. It's advised not to mess around with it in the castle since it might crash the game. Free movement mode is pretty self-explanatory, with the exception of the function not allowing you to go through objects since the floor checks and wall checks are still being made when it's running. If you hold B and go fast enough though, you can actually clip through the hitboxes. So it turns out that the other debug menus I showed you are the newer ones compared to this one, which is called the old debug display. It was meant to be used for object movement flags, and for this debug display to function, it needs to be attached to an object. And just in case you were wondering, bound means the object has landed, touch means it's on the ground, takeoff means the object has left the ground, dive means that it's entered water, S water is moving at the water's surface, U water is under the surface, B water is moving on the ground in the water, and sky is moving in the air. There's also an unknown function here that was called outscope, which is assumed to have been for when an object has either unloaded or is out of the camera's view. This next one I talked about in the iceberg video specifically, and this is the more well-known level select. 
This one features an early version of the title screen, and when enabled, it replaces the file select screen. It's pretty self-explanatory what this was meant to do, so let's move on. In the Europe, Shindu, and IQ versions, there's an unused thread of code for a crash handler that can also be found in Paper Mario, but since it's not initialized in any of the versions, it goes unused and looks like this. And the last thing for debug content is that early on in the development for the game, the title screen had a bunch of pink cubes which marked areas where Mario's face could be grabbed on the title screen. Normally these cubes are invisible, but changing a single line of code reveals them, so if you ever wondered where the hitboxes were on the title screen, there you go. Okay, on to development stuff. So this section largely retains to the Nintendo Giga Leak that I also talked about in the Iceberg video, so for this section it's going to cover a lot of things that got scrapped early on in development that we had no idea about until the Giga Leak revealed everything. So starting with models. This conveniently starts out with an older model of Mario, with differences being mainly in the lower poly head, different lighting, darker hair, and a slightly different texture for the sideburns. The final version on the right got rid of the low light and cleaned the model up a little bit more to what we know it as today. Multiple different poly models exist for Luigi as well, with the main three being a high, medium, and low poly version of the model. Along with the three models mentioned, there's also these, which are just models with an unused head and torso of Luigi. Most of the main characters in the game have older models too, so I'll quickly go over through the rest of the main ones. Peach was much different looking, with really the biggest difference here being that the old model actually contained legs underneath of the dress, with the final version getting rid of it and also lightening up the color scheme. All of the relevant animations in the game were also made using the old models, with all of them looking like this, which is pretty unsettling due to the lack of a face. Yoshi, at least to me, had a slightly better looking shape in his early model compared to the final model, with these differences again being with the general lighting and slightly different shapes, most noticeable with the length of the eyes. Yoshi has two unused animations that pertain to this older model, and this model was later repurposed for a different game called Mario Artist Polygon Studio, which was on the failed Nintendo 64 DD. Mips was originally going to have a pink color scheme instead of the final yellow, with some animations along with an unused falling animation being left in the final game's data. I always thought this was just the mother penguin, but her name is Ping, and the left shows an early version of the model that can actually be seen in some videos, like the Space World 95 demo, so this one is a little more known than the other ones. I think the old model was pretty out of place, and the final one definitely suits a mother penguin much better than the old one that stares right into your soul. A file called amenbo.sou contains this early version of a skeeter. Yes, that's the name of the enemy. And by applying unused vertex colors to it, this is what the model looks like, which is basically identical to the final one, so nothing really special here. The early bullet bills slightly differed, with the only difference here being that the old ones didn't have shadows, with this being fixed in the final version. The files walker.shape and walker.sou contain an early version of the scuttlebug, which is probably my favorite enemy by the way, and I think that this enemy went through probably the most drastic changes in the entire game, with the old model looking a lot angrier and focused compared to the final one which looks like it doesn't have any thoughts in its head. And I'm just now realizing this, but the scuttlebug has fangs, and I only just now noticed that. It's not like it makes it any more intimidating, but still, when am I not learning stuff about this game? Womps also went through a pretty extensive change, with a file called wallman.sou containing an early version of the Womp, being the same one from the Shoshinkai 95 demo. The only thing from the old model that was kept in the final one is its hands, if you can even call those hands, and the early model was probably a placeholder, if anything. Along with the Womps, the Thwomps also went through a similar change, but I don't think the Thwomps early model is a placeholder, as it feels more complete than the Womp did. But on the left is what an earlier model looked like, also seen in the 1995 demo. And like in the demos, the shadow type was circular instead of being square like it is in the final. If there was a model that went through the least amount of changes, then it might be the bully. With the early version having just one horn. It has an optional 3D body to go along with it, which is how it looks in the final version. The Wiggler isn't much different, with the model being more unfinished than anything else. The Wiggler did have an old walking animation though, so that's cool. In a file called utubo.sou, there's an early version of the Unagi, which does differ quite a bit and features a less intimidating yellow appearance. It's likely that it just didn't have its red texture made in time, but because the teeth and eyes are commented out in the final model, it was probably just not finished. 
Did you know there were bats in the game? Because I didn't. And I also didn't know that the older version of it looked more like a mouse than it did a bat. Actually, the more I look at the final one, it also looks like a happy mouse more than it does a bat. WanWan.sou contains an early version of Manax, I mean the Chain Chomp, seen in Bob on Battlefield. It actually matches the finished model except for it having shading on the body and having its eyes being closer to the body. The old model for the shark used to be much darker and included seven different textures as opposed to the final which only has three. The shark's name is also Sushi in case you were wondering if it had a name. The early version of the Heave Ho is a textureless version which has a flag on its back instead of a wind-up key and is a slightly different shape compared to the final model. This enemy also happens to be one of my favorites, and I'm sure many people would agree. Okay, on to some other stuff. The game's title screen has had quite a lot of renditions, being last edited in March of 1996. This one is one of the oldest ones, being an extremely early render of the logo. There's a really similar one which is just called Mario 64 logo in the files, being ever so slightly different in the length of the 3D in the text. This one is pretty weird, but it was likely meant for an early version of the title screen considering that the file name is called titleface.sou. I don't even really know what this was meant to be. Maybe a test or an early title screen? Not sure. It is known though that before being called the Nintendo 64, it was called the Ultra 64, and with that came this map title that said Ultra Mario, with this one being one of the level select screens that I also brought up in the Iceberg video. Last thing I'll talk about in this section is this massive test cube that would change colors when viewed from a distance, with its function most likely being used to test color change shading in the game. Alright, time to move on to sprites and textures. So this section contains a lot of interesting information, but also a lot of things that I really don't care to endlessly talk about. So for the sake of convenience, I'm only going to talk about the interesting things that are on the page, so let's begin. In the file named titlearrow.sou, there's two icons that were most likely related to the scrapped two-player mode, as developers have stated in interviews that Luigi was intended to appear in a multiplayer mode, with this being evidence of the scrapped idea. Stars used to be so much different looking than they are now, with the original sprite being far less rigid and had much rounder edges. If you were to import the star into the game, then it would look like this, and the white edges that you see would also still be visible due to only one bit being reserved for the alpha channel. And while we're still talking about stars, the original texture for the star had a darker portion of it, and it made the star look more like brass than it did gold, but this was obviously changed to be primarily gold, but I don't think people would have cared if they left it in. Flag.sou is an old flag graphic that was probably used as flags in the old castle, with it looking pretty similar to how it did in the 1995 patent build of the game, and the similarity becomes even more clear when converting the image to black and white, and if it isn't, then it was scrapped from the game regardless. So normally when you die in Super Mario 64, you get this Bowser transition that plays every single time you lose a life. Well interestingly, there's an unused skull transition found inside of a file called tanydata.h, and I couldn't find a video of this, but I'm sure you could imagine what the transition looks like. So if you've seen beta footage of the game before, then you're probably familiar with how there used to be several different test stages, ranging all the way from stage 1 to stage 99. Really only around 10 of the stages exist in a visual form, so those are the ones I'll go over now. Stage 1, which is a stage that's been playing on the screen, is a scrapped level that was briefly seen in a Nintendo 64 promotional video from 1995. There's honestly not really much to the stage, and it looks pretty similar to the shape of Womp's Fortress, though lacking 95% of the things. There's a clone of the level in the stage 99 folder which seems to have been used as a test level, shocking, but it ended up getting replaced at some point with another test level that was exactly the same, but had single coins placed all over the place, with a star on the top of blue platform, which would have been reachable if the object Hoot's Egg didn't have all of its code removed. Stage 2 is a level that seems to exist for testing terrain and movement, which can be found in the files as testshape.sou. According to the graphic files, the stage is called Athletic, and it has many slopes of varying degrees placed all around the stage in different colors. The colors apparently correspond to different terrain types, and there's also a spot with no floor that was probably used for testing the effects of being out of bounds, or it also could have been intended for a cannon. Stage 3 appears to be some kind of dungeon or hub level, which is called dungeonshape.sou, and it's referred to as donjon, which means a great tower or castle, 
and the stage consists of several different rooms and hallways with seemingly random textures placed on the walls, floors, and ceilings. The general size of it also seems to be bigger than the areas in the final game, and no objects are present in the course or the files for it. I'm going to skip over stage 32 since it's divided into sub-stages, but just in case you were wondering what they look like, the stages look like this. Stage 35 consists of a flat ground with a green and white checkerboard pattern, and it seems to have existed solely for testing movement and not really anything else. Stage 37 is similar in that it was used to test physics and enemies, with the stage having two collision models being stage 37.flk and plane.flk. The model is dated sometime before January 18th, 1996, as stage 37 itself was removed on the very same day. The only pictures we have of it are restorations from the code, and the stage is called IW Test in the source code. And finally, stage 38 consists of an octagon shaped area with sand in various parts of it, a hangable ceiling, and a mirror for Mario's reflection. It's pretty obvious here that stage 38 existed to test the mirrors, collision with sand, and whatever else the stage was relevant for, but this is pretty much it for the test stages. Now we're going to move on to the objects themselves. Moto's Man is a pretty well-known unused enemy that was meant to have been in Lethal Lava Land in Bowser in the Fire Sea. Moto's Man works a lot like a Chukya does in that he tries to pick up Mario to throw him into the air, and like I mentioned, he's one of the most well-known enemies that was cut. The enemy is fully finished, having multiple different animations that exist for it, with my personal favorite one being the walking one. It reminds me of that one episode of Spongebob if you know what I mean. Along with Moto's Man, there's also a grasshopper enemy, with really nothing else being known about it aside from the fact that it existed in the game's code. It has only one animation that goes along with it, so there's really no telling if it would have been an enemy or just an entity. The Test Lift is a yellow test platform that was, you guessed it, created to test out how the elevators worked. It has an unused path file associated with it and a smaller shape version of this is still left over in the game as an unused object. Heading back to animations, the ones that I talked about earlier are the ones that exist in the game files, but these next ones are ones that pertain to the Giga Leak, which came from earlier versions of the game, and just like with the first time, these animations start with Mario. Well, it's actually all Mario. There's exactly 50 animations of Mario here to talk about, but since there's so many, let's talk about the interesting ones. This animation being called Chase Jog was most likely supposed to be for when Mario is chasing nips or something, but it's pretty funny looking regardless of what its purpose was. There's a similar version of this called Chasing, where Mario is doing a full sprint instead, but since Mario's head is facing down, the animation looks so weird. Float Move seems to be an animation of Mario slowly paddling through the water, but instead of being in a diving position, he's just kind of walking. It kind of looks like when you try to run in a pool. Mant Gear, based on the name, seems to have been for when Mario changes flying modes during a flight. Maybe it was a way to slow down or even come to a complete stop while flying, but all we can really do is assume. Also mentioned in the iceberg, the ocean animations, specifically Ocean Weight, is a really weird looking animation of Mario covering his face. The word ocean translates to nausea, so it might have been for when Mario got nauseous, maybe planned to have been in the ship in Jolly Roger Bay, or maybe somewhere like the gas area in Hazy Maze Cave. Swim Soft Down is most likely the original version of Mario drowning, with the biggest difference being that in this version, he spins around instead of being in one position like in the final game. In the concept art for the game, there existed a concept move called an anime dash, and it was most likely repurposed into Wario's dash attack instead. I only bring this one up because there's a mock-up that was made for it if it did get used, and this is probably what it would have looked like in the game. When Demo Old, being a really early version of the dance that plays after Mario collects a star, is the only animation from the Giga Leak that has evidence of being motion captured, and it's really hard to imagine Mario doing that after getting a star. And the last one I'll talk about is a title demo called Anime Title Demo, and there's a good chance that it could be the oldest title screen for Super Mario 64. This was most likely used for the early title screen in the Nintendo 64 B-roll from 1995, and it kind of reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3. Alright, it's time to move on to the unused models and objects. We're starting fresh with another very well-known enemy named Blarg. Blarg first appeared in Super Mario World in the levels that had lava in them, and it appears that he was also planned for Super Mario 64 since there's an unfinished model for it in the game files. The file itself was last modified on November 20th, 1995, 
and it appears that the enemy would have been in Lethal Lava Land. No behavioral code existed with Blarg, but it did exist as it was later found during the Giga Leak, along with a bunch of other things that I'll talk about later. The Boo Key was something that was only shown in really early footage of the game, where it would have been obtained by defeating a big Boo. There's still some unused key symbols with the HUD textures in the Japanese version, but the key was replaced with a different image in the European version, and was removed entirely in the US version. Based on how the key functions when it's restored to its functionality, it seems that the key's original purpose was to open the bookshelves in Big Boo's Haunt by using the keys. Something else that's interesting about this key is that it also had three other color variants, with the yellow one being its default color, and the other three being red, green, and blue. Normally, in order to get this star in Snowman's Land, you have to navigate your way through this ice structure until you eventually make your way to the star, but it wasn't always like this. This object was once placed on top of the structure, and the player had to originally ground pound the ice in order to get the star. It was initially speculated that this cracked ice could have been in a generic platform that you could break, but it was later confirmed to have been specifically designed for this singular star. So normally when meeting Hoot the Owl in Womp's Fortress, the owl comes out of this tree when Mario climbs to the top. And just like with the cracked ice, this wasn't the original intention. This unused egg that looks a lot like a Yoshi egg but isn't, is labeled as bird underscore egg in the code, and has the exact same prefix that Hoot the Owl uses. It's confirmed to belong to the owl due to a deleted object being next to the hoot labeled as E underscore bird underscore egg in the files, and based on the overall evidence here, it appears that the original idea for the owl was to be hatched from this egg instead of coming out of a tree like it does in the game. Similar to how there's three horizontal sections on the wet dry world painting that control the water levels when you enter the stage, the rest of the paintings inside of the castle are actually split into three vertical sections, with each able to be independently set to any warp destination in the game. The reason it technically goes unused though is because the three sections are always set to the exact same destination, deeming this functionality completely pointless. Using a level editor to go into Womp's Fortress, there's an unused object that appears next to the cannon that has no functionality. But it turns out that this is actually a relic of how the fish easter egg worked in the prototype. For those of you who don't know what the easter egg is, when you jump out of shallow water, there's an incredibly low chance for a fish to also jump out of the water with you. The finalized game has a 1 in 256 chance for this to happen, and it's not really known why they removed this at first, but it's most likely due to how the easter egg worked initially. The event was originally associated with an object which took up an object slot, but the newer version simply relied on a dice roll, which removed the need for the object in Womp's Fortress. The bullies in Lethal Lava Land come in both small and large sizes, and the Chill Bully originally had two different sizes as well, but the smaller version ended up going unused in favor of just the bigger one instead. Now this one's one of my favorites. I'm not sure what happened to the original footage that I used in the iceberg, but the spring, also known as the trampoline, is, well, a trampoline that had barely any code made for it before it was scrapped. The function that it would have activated being called do trampoline is blanked out in the source code, but it did at one point appear in the cap stage's object table along with the red cap switch, so it was probably meant for that stage. Recreations of how it probably would have worked are as shown, and it's one of my favorites for a reason. It's a trampoline. For some reason, there's a water mine that was present in the Space World 95 versions, but ended up being scrapped from the finished game. It looks a lot like the bombs in the Bowser levels, and it's also not the first time that a water mine was removed from a Mario game. So the three main switches in the game are the red, blue, and green ones. Well, it turns out that the game was going to have a fourth one which was yellow, and its functionality was apparently going to be for if the player needed to unlock boxed Koopa shells instead of being unlocked by default, for some reason. Eight different variations of alternate Mario head parts went unused which only consist of Mario looking in all four directions, with and without his cap. It's unknown what they were for, but it might have been for sidestepping or climbing. Located within the geometry for the bullies is a large round 3D object that was originally used as the basis for the 2D sprite in the final game. It's slightly larger than the one used by the bully, and it obviously went unused after it was no longer needed. The Heave-Ho enemy has three unreferenced sphere meshes that were once used for the enemy's tires. Yes, tires. The final model uses 2D tires since it was easier on memory, and the original model for Heave-Ho had different colored tires compared to the original. It's still possible to load in the old wheels by replacing these values on the screen. 
In Hazy Maze Cave, there are two unused graphics for the Rolling Rocks. The graphics are smaller than the standard Rolling Rock and are much more jagged than what's actually in the game. It's thought that the rocks might have been intended to break up into these smaller pieces when colliding with Mario, or that they might have broken up over time while rolling down the stage. This did eventually take place in the DS version by using the Super Mushroom as Wario in the stage. Klepto the Bird has three graphical variants inside of the game, holding nothing, holding Mario's hat, and holding a star. That is, three graphical variants in the finished game. Klepto has one unused fourth graphic in which he's holding a blue star, and the transparency on the star is also broken for some reason, and that's most likely why it wasn't used in the game. I talked earlier about how the mother penguin went through a lot of changes, but I didn't talk about all of them. There's a variant of the penguin head that is larger, darker, completely textureless, and features an orange beak instead of a yellow one. There's also an unused head with a sadder expression, with eyes that more closely resemble the original penguins from the 1995 demos. In TikTok Clock, these blocks in the final game look like this, with two vertical stripes on each of its sides. The original version of this looked like this and had three vertical stripes instead of two. My guess for why it got replaced is that the designers liked the two-stripe design way more than they did the three-stripe. I really don't know why else they would remove this, so... The only functional shells in the game are the green ones found in various different levels in the game, but it wasn't always the only one. There used to exist red and green shells that have unusual blue bottoms and can be loaded in-game with codes or just by hacking them in. They're completely non-functional, and they were meant to be used with the unused throwing object and was one of the first objects ever created for Super Mario 64. I know this one isn't an object, but this is one I talked about in the Iceberg video, and it's the only thing interesting enough in the unused textures. If you tried to wear the wing cap and the metal cap at the same time, then it would cause the wings on Mario's cap to use this texture. I mean, it would if they didn't leave it out. But since they did, it's not possible to do it in the base game, but if you somehow managed to make it work, it would look like this, and it's called the metal wing cap. The last thing I'll talk about for the unused objects is a variant on the tower in Womp's Fortress. So normally when you're at the tower here, the platforms all look like this and are rectangular. Well, there happens to be an unused variant of these graphics which use a trapezoid mesh for the platforms, and they honestly look so weird. It's likely that the static platforms were originally intended to use this model, as when it's loaded, there's no gaps between the platforms surrounding the tower, and if you for some reason wanted to load these in, the models can be loaded in by overriding this value on the screen. Well, that's about it for models and objects. Time to talk about some of the regional differences. The first regional change that stands out to me has got to be this weirdly specific difference in the title screen on the demo. In the European version, Mario collects all but two coins at this coin circle in Womp's Fortress. But for some bizarre reason, in the international versions, Mario instead collects all but one instead of two. For some reason. The file select for the US version also has far less options than the European version. Well, really it's only the addition of a language select, but it's still double the options. The end screen is also ever so slightly different from versions, with get this, text saying the end, and the thank you chocolate being changed to be an oval shape instead of a rectangle. No, but there is actually a reason for the re-rendering of the end screen. For one, the text is to accommodate for French and German translations, and the other differences are that the field of view is wider, the camera angle is slightly different, and a circular chocolate is in place of the rectangular one like I already mentioned. So this is what the wall looks like inside of the slide room in the US version of the game but pay attention to the wall right beside of the painting when I transition this over to the Japanese version. Notice anything? So for some reason, this wall piece beside the slide painting is miscolored in the Japanese version of the game. Not sure why, but it is. One of my personal favorite differences is in the painting that's used for Jolly Roger Bay. See, I grew up with the Shindo version of the painting, but only later found out that the Japanese version was completely different. A possible reason for this change is because the painting was originally for Dire Dire Docks, as it didn't match the internal level name of Water Dungeon and Sunken Ship. And yes, I know that everybody knows this already, but I thought I would bring it up anyway. Mario 64 surprisingly has different star placements across versions in two different stages. So let's start with Jolly Roger Bay. In the level itself, the star on the stone pillar is out in the open in the Japanese version, but in the US version, the star is put inside of a box, which if I were to guess, it might have been to make the star less obvious than it is in the Japanese version. 
When getting the baby penguin star in Kuku cool Mountain, the star in the Japanese version is placed right above the mother penguin, but this was changed in the US version to instead spawn next to the pool, which was probably changed to make the star easier to collect. And the last regional difference is in Rainbow Ride, where in the original Japanese version, the pole located above the rotating platforms has four small arrows around its top, which kind of reminds me of a compass. I'm sure you can guess what the difference is, but in every other version of the game, the arrows were removed for whatever reason that might have been. Well, that's pretty much it for regional differences. Now onto the oddities. It's actually possible to pick up a heave-ho while in water if the enemy is close enough to water in the level. This is possible because grabbing in water does not check for the ungrabbable subtype. For some reason, there's a third copy of the ship in Jolly Roger Bay, which is placed way above the other two in the air. The ship is only present during one of the stars, and is invisible without viewing the stage in an editor or using a GameShark code to make it visible. The ship has no collision data, and is programmed to fade the closer Mario gets to it. The ship is most likely a reference to urban legends of ghost ships, especially considering that it's labeled as an optional background object, and the ship itself is loaded in the game, but is never rendered due to it being manually disabled in the code. Super Mario 64 has quite a few coins that can't be collected due to them being inaccessible. This coin in Snowman's Land is unreachable and is stuck inside the snowman at this wooden path. This one actually can be collected if you use a physics exploit by requiring the player to fire the cannon at a precise location on the corner of the nearby wall, but I don't have any footage of it. The tiny version of Tiny Huge Island has several different coins that you can't collect. They're all a part of a line that appears underneath the floor, and the only one that you can see without going to the ground is the bottommost coin on the left. The coins are under the ground because the coins are positioned along a flatter trajectory than the angle of the actual terrain, which causes the remaining coins to clip into the ground. There are more uncollectible coins in this, but these are the most general and most well-known. So these are what the stairs on the other side of the ramp normally look like in Womp's Fortress. Interestingly though, hidden under these stairs reveals unused geometry for a second ramp. You can actually see this one in game, because if you pause while being near the thwomp area, the stairs will unload and the ramp will be visible due to the stairs being a separate object from the level's geometry. Though not left out in the game, there's a lot of hangable ceilings that the player would never even think to try and hang on to. It's really interesting to me that a striking amount of places just outside of the castle alone have hangable ceilings that you'd have really no reason to know about. This next one I'm about to show you though is easily the most obscure. So this cloud in Mario over the rainbow is one of the only ceilings that's actually impossible to reach even with a task. The only way to hang on to it is by using cheats to give yourself some sort of way to latch on. I'm not sure why Nintendo did this, but it exists, and it's impossible to do without cheating. You should try it out sometime. In the secret slide in Tall Town Mountain, the visible model for the slide tunnel looks like this. But if we view this part in a collision model, there's a single rectangular polygon above the exit of the tunnel, which has collision but is invisible. The rectangle is a result of a leftover sign that used to be there, which had an arrow pointing to the left, and can be seen in pre-release footage of the game. The sign texture is no longer in the files though, in the final build of the game. The smoke texture that's displayed in the game is the result of a corrupted texture. The texture is supposed to use the IA16 texture format, but instead uses the RGB A16 texture format, which results in the smoke texture looking like this. If you change the texture to use IA16, then the texture looks much more like actual smoke. Whether the corrupted texture went unnoticed or was intentionally made this way is unknown, but I think it was definitely a mistake. So going back to the menu demos, when going AFK to make the demos start playing, the game plays a total of six gameplay reels in the main menu, with seven in the non-Japanese versions. However, in the demo data, there's actually an eighth demo without a header to define what level it was for. The data exists after the demo for the Secret Slide in Bowser in the Dark World, so it's not known exactly what stage it was for, but the most agreed upon answer is that it was most likely meant to be for Cool Cool Mountain. It's possible that it could be an extended version of the Princess Secret Slide demo based on how awkwardly it cuts off in the code, but there's really no way to know. Well, that's pretty much everything. So I decided to leave glitches out of the video since glitches are almost never intentionally used in games, with Super Mario 64 being no exception. This video is also going to be pretty primitive compared to my other work since I've never made a video like this before, but let me know how I did. 
And if you liked the video, then please consider subscribing and sharing the video with a couple of friends. Depending on how well this video does, I'm more than likely going to make another one of these on a different game. I'm thinking something like Binding of Isaac, but I'm not sure. If you guys do have any suggestions for future videos, then I'd be more than happy to hear your ideas in the comments. But until then, I think I might go work on a Minecraft build or something. Alright, bye bye.